Good morning. Hope you're keeping safe. Hope you're keeping sane. Um, hope you're all doing well. Thank you very much for all your comments and support. As always, if you're not subscribed to the channel, I'm going to take this opportunity to ask you to give that subscribe button a little bit of a tickle and maybe even check out my second channel and give that a little bit of a sub. Um, there you go. That's the self-promotion over with uh, and on to the important matter of today's big question. Yes, um, a question that a lot of people seem to ask me in the comments of my videos um, and so it's something I wanted to address. Um, and that is, why do you always wear that stupid hat? Um, no, that isn't the question, but just to answer that question, look at that, that's why. That's why I always wear that stupid hat. Um, <laughs> yeah, well overdue, a, well overdue a haircut. Anyway, no, the, seriously, the, the question people often ask me is, uh, you know, or at least sort of talk to me about in the comments is uh, how to get over a substantial gambling loss. And a lot of comments will go something along the lines of, um, I've got to give up. Um, I've just lost my month's wages, or just lost X, Y, Z, or just lost my inheritance, or just lost whatever. Okay, and I don't know, firstly, how to sort of get by financially uh, until next payday or whatever, and also how to actually mentally, psychologically cope with the loss. And this is something I really, really struggled with. Um, so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to talk about how I used to um, try <laughs> and uh, and sort of get over substantial financial losses, um, both financially and psychologically. Um, and also, you know, what I now believe to be the best course of action when you do have a sizable gambling loss. Now, two caveats I shall put on this straight away, um, because everyone knows that I love a caveat. Um, firstly, this is my experience and my retrospective opinion. Uh, it may not work for you. And also, it's very important to note that um, what is a substantial loss financially to people uh, will vary massively between each of us, you know. Um, this is why, whilst when I talk about my own experience, maybe I'll talk in financial sort of metrics, um, but to some people, losing 20 quid might screw them up for the week because that might be all they've got to buy food for the week. Um, and some people then go and lose a couple of grand and it's water for ducks back and actually it doesn't doesn't give them sort of any reason for concern whatsoever. So only you will know what is a substantial, notable and concerning financial loss. OK, um, and very finally, uh, before I finally crack on with what I want to talk about, um, I know that a lot of people don't watch my videos to the end. And I appreciate that because I ramble like hell. OK, but if if you are one of those people who tends to sort of cut off about the six minute mark seems to be the uh, about people's tolerance for my, my voice, um, then just know that when I share my experiences in the first half of this video, that is not a uh, model I recommend. Uh, replicating um, because it's something that got me in even more trouble than I really needed to be. So onwards, let's let's describe a typical losing scenario for for old Phil. Right, I would uh, I'd go to the bookies, um, running that last few hundred yards as we discussed in the last video because the dopamine was flowing and I couldn't wait to get in there in that really really exciting environment of people standing around being miserable um, and lose all my money. So I'd jog the last couple of hundred yards into the bookmakers. I'd start loading up the fob tees with me notes, maybe a couple of hundred quid, start playing on the mega spins or whatever. doesn't matter. Okay, And then maybe another couple of hundred goes in over the desk and another couple of hundred. Anyway, let's fast forward to the inevitable. Okay, And an hour later, two hours later, 20 minutes later, I walk out a thousand pound down. I've lost a grand, right? And um, to me, that would be, uh, have been and would still be a very, very significant amount of money. And when I was gambling, that certainly would have caused me financial issues um, because I would then probably be in a position where I'd have to wait till the next payday before I could even have any extra money to spend or whatever. So, so what would I do? Well, psychologically, the position I always found myself in was that I wanted to restore my standing, both financially and psychologically, to the same point I was at when I went into the bookie. So therefore, I, I could almost gloss over the fact that the gambling, the loss, had ever actually occurred. Um, again, as always, forgive me if I get a bit emotional talking about this sort of stuff. Um, it wasn't a heavy night last night. I am just, just an emotional kind of guy. Um, so what I'd want to do is restore that that sort of psychological um, well-being. You know? And what I would say first and foremost is something that I talked about in my last video is that win or lose, you are very unlikely to walk out of a bookmaker's or any gambling situation or gambling um, arena in the same psychological state as you went in. Because you, your, your dopamine, your neurochemical buzz, has been depleted. Um, you know, your 
the, the dopamine you get, the feel-good factor you get from gambling occurs with the promise of gambling, with the process of gambling, but certainly not with the result of gambling, regardless or not of whether that is a positive or negative financial net result. As I spoke about in my last video, go and watch it if you haven't. That is why you often feel deflated when you leave a gambling establishment, even if you are in profit, theoretically. Right. So I would leave the bookies and I'd want to put myself back in the position I was in before I went into the bookies. Now, as I just explained, psychologically, that's almost certainly not able to happen purely because of the way brain chemicals work. Okay, But my brain would immediately assume that if I could somehow balance my books financially purely on a numeric basis, i.e. make sure I've got the same amount of cash in my wallet as I had when I walked in, that somehow my mental state would be restored and all would be good in the world and sunshine and rainbows, right? So what would I do? Well, I would make sure that I got hold of that money. This is where, uh, and I'm going to make a, a, an update video on my gambling debts uh, in due course because a few people have asked for it, um, but this is where most of my gambling debts came from. There was a common misconception, and I don't know, not everyone is going to be like me, of course, but there's a common misconception that people go out their way to borrow money to gamble. If you have a gambling addiction, that's why payday loans, you know, people get payday loans to gamble because they, they had the urge and they felt the need to go out and, and, and spend some money on the, their addiction. It wasn't the case with me. Um, most of my gambling debt came from plugging financial holes that I had left for myself after gambling. Often, these weren't even, and this is the, the crux of my experience, often I didn't even need the money. And that's not, I'm not saying that in any kind of flash way. I'd still maybe sort of pretty much skint, but I didn't need the money to survive. My bills might have been paid, maybe the cupboards were full of food. All it meant is I didn't have a load of spare cash to throw about for the rest of the month, right? But psychologically, I needed to have that balance. Firstly, to restore my, you know, my sanity because I've just lost that money and, you know, I need it back. Um, and also because, as we discussed previously, as gamblers, we need to have finance uh, funds available so when we do have a gambling urge, we're able to act upon it, and we're able to um, appease our uh, our addiction. Um, so I would go out of my way to find that money, and that be that that may have been a payday loan, and that's how I ended up in so much debt. Like I say, it was all through borrowing to replace money I'd lost, rather than borrowing money to gamble in the first place. Or it might have been that I'd reshuffled money in my bank accounts. You know, maybe borrowed some money from my business account, or you know, taken some money out of not that I didn't have savings, but you know what I mean. You know, I, I robbed Peter to pay Paul just so that my current account or the, the balance in my wallet, i.e. the amount of cash I was carrying on me, was the same as before I went to the bookies. You know, believing genuinely that somehow by seeing the same numbers or the same amounts of bits of paper in my wallet would put my psychological, um, would restore my psychological state and would undo the damage I'd done. Now, retrospectively, there is so many flaws in this strategy. It's well, it's, it's obvious to see, um, but obviously we become sort of blind to it, and we just do what we have to do to sort of get through the days, don't we? Sometimes, obviously, by doing this, particularly if you are borrowing money from less than you know reputable sources, um, you know payday lenders, high you know limit credit cards, loan sharks, whatever, you are putting yourself financially in a worse position overall because you're going to be paying back more so not only have you just lost a grand you lost another 500 quid you're going to pay an interest or more okay also psychologically <laughs> yes short term maybe you feel a little bit better about yourself because you still got a bit of cash on your hip to go and do whatever you want to do but psychologically you've just created yourself another burden another thing that's hanging over your head that sword of damocles that eventually is going to come crashing down and um when you do finally address your problem, as I did, you'll find that all these little burdens that have been churning away at the back of your head, all this stuff that's been stacking up, um, has stacked up somewhat significantly higher than you initially expected. So this is an incredibly flawed strategy. The, And I'm not going to go too deep on the sort of psychoanalysis analysis of this because um, I'm not an expert, to be completely honest. Like I say, uh, like I always say, I am no no expert. I'm just <laughs> a, a battle-scarred recovering gambler. Um, but... The psych psychology of this is, is dangerous as well because you are glossing over uh, a problem. You're doing you're taking additional harmful action, i.e., borrowing money or you know lying, deceiving, stealing, whatever you're doing, right? Um, you're taking harmful action to basically disguise the loss that you've just experienced. 
people like I say ask me a lot how do I get over this how do I emotionally get over losing such a substantial amount of money and uh, over time I have come to realize the rather depressing reality is that you can't um you can try and cover it up which fleetingly might make you feel a little bit better but ultimately adds to your problems but it's still there you've still lost that money and the to say you need to come to terms with it is belittling i know the absolute psychological carnage that is caused by a notable financial loss um we become very sort of self-deprecating yeah we, we you know we blame ourselves often people consider sort of self-harm in these situations because they blame themselves rather than the gambling for their actions um and I do talk a lot about personal responsibility, and I think it's a, it's a very significant factor. But after a loss, we tend to call ourselves stupid, don't we? We, we beat ourselves up either, you know, metaphorically or physically. And um, the, the, like I say, I'm not, I'm not just saying you need to get over the loss. Uh, and to say you need to use it as a learning point, or it's, it's, it's too obvious. It's too. Um, sanctimonious just to say well te use it, teach it as a lesson you take it as a lesson um, but I, I had so many very expensive lessons which I, I seem to you know refuse to learn from the only thing I would say if you are coming to this video off the back of a loss is that actually it will repair itself in time okay? there is no instant action you can take to immediately offset both the financial and psychological damage that a gambling loss will have on you. There's nothing you can do now. If you like I say, if you come to this video off the back of a big loss, there is nothing you can do this minute. The only thing you can do this minute is make a resolution to change. And I appreciate, as I always say, that's so much easier said than done. But if you have decided this is something you want to address, now is possibly the time to do it before before the psychological damage and before the financial damage starts to repair itself, use the um, the heightened sort of uh, emotion you're currently experiencing to do something practical to help future you um, prevent you know prevent future you from making the same mistakes. Um, I'm really trying hard and for this not to come over sanctimonious because I, like I say I made the the same mistakes more times than I'd say I care to mention but more times than I can actually remember but use the negative mental energy you have at this moment to do all the, the mundane stuff that I always talk about get blocks in place talk to someone you know book some therapy get on gam stop self exclude you know sort your your, um, your bank cards out so you can't gamble online um the easiest thing to do after a big gambling loss is go, well, I can't gamble now anyway because I haven't got any money, so therefore I don't need to put any blocks in place. But the problem is you'll get money again, whether that be payday, whether that be when your social security or whatever they call it comes in, um, or you you know, you know, manage to lay your hands on a payday loan. <laughs> don't do it, but, you know, again, <laughs> do as I, don't do as I say. Uh, don't do as I do either, actually. In fact, don't do either. Um, but you will get money again, and... <sighs> If you can use the energy you've got now to, you know, when you do get money again, to prevent yourself from making the same mistakes, that's all I'm saying. That's the only thing you can do now. What you can't do now is fix the situation you're in. You can't get that money back. Don't even try. Don't try and gamble it back. Don't try and borrow it back. Don't try and, you know, get it back by shuffling around your finances or going to, like, go to cash converters and sell your laptop or whatever. Don't do it, right? Get, if you need money to survive, of course, that's a different matter than just, but get the bare minimum. But before you borrow any money, before you lay your hands on any more cash, just consider, can I can I get through the rest of the month without any more money? Because in some way that's a lesson, but in more importantly, it prevents you from doing more financial damage in terms of interest and all the rest of it, and it stops an additional psychological burden, and as gamblers we carry a huge amount of psychological burdens, it prevents another one of them from stacking up in your brain and ultimately putting more and more stress on your mental well-being. Um, the pain from a loss will, will subside. The pain from a loss will subside in the same way that a hangover subsides. Um, so don't elongate it by borrowing money to cover up what is uh, effectively a short-term problem. I hope that makes some sort of sense. It's not 
I would, it, I would love to be able to come to one of these videos and say, look, you just had a big gambling loss. This is what you do. This is how you feel better. But trust me, I tried everything to make myself feel better in terms of the financial recovery, the psychological recovery, and often just drowning my sorrows, you know. Spending that last £20 you have in your wallet on a bottle of whiskey and going home and having that with a, you know, takeaway pizza or whatever. Um, that'd probably have to be at least 30 quid, wouldn't it? But anyway, you know what I mean. All right, just, just burying the, the problem. Um, because it just adds to it. There's nothing, there is nothing you can do that is going to make that problem go away. Um, it will get better in time. And just be aware that any immediate attempts to do, you know, to write it will just, you know, make it harder to get over in the long run. Um, the best thing you can do is use that as a kicking off point to do something more productive in terms of actually cementing the basis of a recovery. I've rambled. I've talked too much. I'll let you go now. Thank you very much for watching. Um, have a good day. Stay safe. Stay sane. And um, yeah, look after yourselves. All the best. <laughs>